Like so many parts of the world, the market holds a place of special significance. Where culture, community, history converge. But look closer. Something is wrong here. A subtle yet stunning paradox. Wheelbarrows and carts laden high with the best the land can provide, and yet almost no one's buying. This landlocked ancient nation, ravaged by decades of war, is once again a prison for its own people. This is the Afghanistan we've left behind. This is life under the rule of the Taliban. Starvation and poverty have become ruthless partners in the collapse of the nation, making desperation Afghanistan's main export. I lose my everything every day at night. I I cry. Health, security, human rights now all in dire crisis. Well, Afghanistan is a time bomb, and it is ticking. Uh, you have a, an interconnected humanitarian disaster. You have an emboldened foreign terrorist, and then you have the, all the spillover effects that comes from a destabilized Afghanistan. After the Taliban forcefully overthrew the elected government, the Western world retaliated, pulling all funding and freezing Afghanistan's assets. Billions of dollars simply disappeared from government coffers. And an already fragile economy teeters close to collapse. Jobs lost, prices surging, food aid suspended. The entire middle class of Afghanistan have vanished and 22 million people are in the verge of uh, starvation. It was just four months ago that we saw Afghanistan fall. In the wake of the White House striking a deal with the Taliban last year, all Western forces left Afghanistan leaving the Taliban to walk into the presidential palace with barely a shot fired. A catastrophe broadcast live around the world. Today, the Taliban's no longer a militia, hiding in the shadows. It's the government, albeit unelected and unrecognized by the world. And it seems winning the war is starting to look much easier than providing and caring for all 40 million Afghans. Every day, this ritual repeats itself. And every day, the need only grows, battling hunger that will not wane, feeding lines of people that only grow longer. The hunger that stalks the land now saves its cruelest blow for the smallest of bellies. Hospitals across the country now overflow with malnourished children and parents desperately seeking care for their babies. This is a tragedy of what's going on in Afghanistan right now. Little Mohammed here is absolutely tiny. He's two years old. He weighs just about 11 to 12 pounds. He should weigh something much closer to around 30. He's just skin and bone. His mother doesn't have the money to get the medicine that he needs. The World Health Organization warning that as many as one million Afghan children could die this winter. That would be far more than the total number of deaths throughout the entire 20 year war. Every single baby in this ward suffers from malnutrition. And with hospitals totally reliant on foreign aid that's now been largely frozen, children are now dying because they can't get the treatment they need. How difficult is it to look after patients right now? <laughs> Chicken, I said. 
بگه ما مثلا نظر به مراجعین ما ما مثلا جایی نداریم که بخواد اینا به سر باشه ما مجبور میشیم به نظر تداوی خانگی بود But for so many here, that's not an option. Mohammed Sadiq's 19-month-old daughter is getting sicker by the day. The speed of the collapse has left shock and desperation in its wake. Lila Hyderi was once the very picture of progress and defiance, a symbol of the Afghanistan that almost was. Salam. She lived a life dedicated to her community, <laughs> running this private drug rehab center, which had been the only one of its kind in Kabul. <laughs> Funding it through a restaurant she owned. Hello. Now, with the Taliban in power, her world has been turned upside down. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. How are you really? Uh, but... Sakhta. The rehab center and her restaurant now both shuttered. Her dreams of a better future for her country, of a place at the table for women, of democracy, destroyed. When the Taliban came in on August the 15th, what happened with you? We were shocked and we saw that was برای جامعه جهانی دیگه ارزش های انسانی و ارزش های دموکراتیک هیچ دیگه ارزشی نداشت شما بز... ما اصلا نمیتونم تصور کنم که یک آدم در چه حد میتونه بترسه یا مثلا حراس کنه که بیایه و بعد مثلا از روی بال تیاره پرتاب شود در روی زمین و باز هم ما برمیگردم متهم ردیف اول در وضعیت افغانستان آمریکایه جو بایدن چی ترامپش <laughs> but Lila's resolve is a flame that still flickers even in the darkness. Today she runs a vocational training center for women, teaching them English, sewing, computer skills. تنستم برم ویزای استرالیا دارم ویزای کانادا دارم و برایتی می تنستم آمریکا برم دم روزای اول. اما چرا هنوز مانده؟ چون با رفتنی از من فقط من ایجاد پیدا میکنم و این هم از زن و کودک دیگه که میمانن اینا چی موشن There are so many women like Lila women who once not only had a voice in Afghanistan but a place Today most have been silenced so This is your office Yeah This newsroom was once filled with 50 female journalists 49 have fled or are in hiding fearing for their lives leaving just one left behind. Brave, undeterred, Zara Nabi is on a mission to keep shining a light on the women of Afghanistan. Not allow even at home to work because I have to hide it you know, from my mom. You have to hide yeah. your work from yeah. your mom, yeah. why? Because she will get stressed. She will worry that you will have yeah, problems yeah. with the Taliban? Yeah, yeah, that's why I promised her and then she said that this time if I see you, then I swear I will put you on the street. <laughs> but it's a difficult path she treads. The Taliban have largely stifled free speech here, which means every word Zara writes, every voice she records, every story she tells puts her at risk. Are you not afraid? I, yeah, of course, I'm scared too much, I'm afraid too much, of course. But despite the danger, mm. you still insist you must stay. Yeah, you know, because if you were instead of me, you do. I'm sure you do the same. Are you the last female journalist left in Afghanistan? No, there is a lot, but they are, the problem is that they are not working and they are not showing themselves. When we come back, We've changed vehicles to try and make ourselves less conspicuous. With women's rights suppressed, we go inside an underground world with the higher stakes. This is illegal, 
Why are you running a school and risking everything? And American weapons in the hands of the Taliban. Now, the Taliban and their foreign terrorist fighters are the most well-equipped terrorist group in the, on, on planet Earth. Stay with us. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.